Yeah, I mean, I don't think you are exactly what you claim you are. What, what am I? Um, you know, I would say you're a, um, pretty much um, conservative. What makes me conservative? So, I voted for Trump in 2020. Yeah, there you go. Right. Pretend moderate Tim Pool had on Matt Bender, host of the Doomed and Scam Economy podcast, for a very interesting three-hour-plus discussion. And I have a few clips. So Matt Bender is comes from a, a left-wing perspective. Tim Pool pretends to be a centrist. He's ultimately a conservative. Look at all of his content, but we'll get more on that in a minute here. So I have a few clips to share. Let's. This is going to be probably a long video, so I just want to jump into it. Let's get to the first clip here. This is about them discussing Twitter's policy against misgendering people. Misgendering policy, right? Misgendering policy, yep. That's Twitter's policy. Yep. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And yep. it's, it's biased against conservatives. How is it biased against conservatives? Conservatives don't agree with the concept of misgendering. I mean... Not a single one, right? I mean, it's basic respect, if you ask me. No, it doesn't matter if... I'm not... I'm not, I'm not well, that's if you ask you it's, coming from a left-wing perspective, sure. right? But, but it's sure. not a, I'm, I'm not making a moral statement. I'm sure. saying conservatives don't agree with the concept of misgendering, right? That's a fact. I mean, maybe there are conservatives that don't. I mean, that do agree. Well, but, I mean, do you think conservatives agree with the concept of misgendering? I mean, vast majority, yeah, sure. You think they, they agree that misgendering is a thing? No, no, they agree that they should have the right to misgender someone. Right, they don't believe it exists. You, you view it as they think they should be allowed to, but conservatives don't think it's a thing. Right. right. So you've got, sure. you've got how many, with 74 million Trump voters, I'd say the overwhelming majority are like either don't know what it even means, or if you look at the staunch conservatives would outright say, well, we have to, possible. we have to, we have to be very specific here about, I'm, I'm all for someone learning and understanding and using the wrong language. I mean, I know plenty of people on the left. I do myself. Sometimes I use the wrong pronoun or whatever for someone who, uh, you know, does not identify as that gender. And if someone's coming at it in good faith and not meaning to, you know, to harm somebody or be, you know, be, well, uh, look, look, that's, that, 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 I don't want to deviate too much. Well, I, I mean, you, I, I mean, saying, I mean, I mean the, the issue but is, you brought up that there's conservatives who don't even know that's a thing. We, we know conservatives will call a trans woman he, right? Yes. Therefore, Twitter's rules do not, are, 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 are not fitting what conservatives do and think on a daily basis. I mean, you could it argue. Is, it, is over, it is like, it's one plus one equals two. It's like just right there in front of you. I mean, you could argue that about anything though. Like what? What do you mean like what? Like you can't say the N word on Twitter. And, and do conservatives want to say the N-word? Yeah. No, they don't. Oh, want. please. They do. See, Bro. not all conservatives, but they're, the subsection of Twitter that does want to is certainly on the right. There are people who like using bad words on the right. There are people who like using bad words on the left. If you want to, like, you, we're not going to, I'm not going to make a blanket statement that every leftist wants to advocate for Antifa going and killing people, but there are certainly Antifa that go around advocating for killing people. Yeah, and if they do that on Twitter... They get banned. Advocating for violence will get you banned. So what point is he even trying to make here? Let's dig down. I'm going to show you Twitter's policy here and showcase how this is all about how Tim Pool frames issues, what he decides to focus on and what he decides not to focus on. So looking at Twitter's terms of service, they say here, we prohibit targeting others with repeated slurs, tropes, or other content that intends to dehumanize, degrade, or reinforce negative or harmful stereotypes about a protected category. This includes targeted misgendering or deadnaming of transgender individuals. We also prohibit the dehumanization of a group of people based on their religion. Religion? Twitter. Twitter is against, is against Democrats. Twitter hates atheists because if you look... Pew Research shows the vast majority of people that are atheists are Democrat, Democrat-leaning. Twitter hates Democrats. Proof right here. <laughs> now, if I wanted to be Tim Pool and focus on this ridiculous, obscure point, I could do that, but it would be dumb. This thing is doesn't matter. Who cares? But because right now, misgendering or... Trans issues have become a massive thing on the right, uh, trying to turn this into a, a culture war issue, when it's simply an issue of human rights, respecting people and acknowledging who they are. Because he understands this is a huge issue for, for the right, he focuses on this as a problem, when it is not a problem. It's simple human decency. Somebody wants to be called something that they identify as, then call them as they identify. You purposely doing that to hurt them Yes, should lead to you getting suspended. How is this hard to understand? Like this, is, <laughs> this whole discussion, this entire focus 
on random garbage like this. It showcases ultimately how horrible conservatives are. If they just can't acknowledge somebody for who they are, then that's a problem with conservatives. That isn't a problem with the Twitter policy or a problem with the left. That is a problem with you not wanting to respect people with basic human decency, acknowledging who they are as people. All right, I had to find that next clip. So <laughs> the next clip is going to be about how or Bender asking Tim Pool or pressing him on how he identifies politically. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think you are exactly what you claim you are. What, what am I? Um, you know, I would say you're a, pretty much a conservative. What makes me conservative? What makes you uh, a liberal? Uh, well, traditional liberals in this country, uh, specifically social liberal, uh, is where I've always been, voted for Obama in 2008. A lot of people voted for Obama in 2008 and then moved over to Trump. We've, we've established that. So I voted for Trump in 2020. Yeah, there you go. Right. So uh, traditional liberals. All those liberals who voted for Trump. Nine you know? million in this country. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't and, consider and, them liberal. And substantially more. Uh, Donald Trump is You're talking about Democrats, not liberals. No, they're liberal. Uh, Donald Trump is a New York, a New York liberal. Like Donald Trump unfurled an LGBT flag on the RNC stage and got Republicans to clap for it. Oh, sure. OK, so uh, I'm pro-choice. Uh, well, I'm, we could talk about that. Yeah, I'm pro-progressive tax. Uh, I'm pro-Green New Deal. Uh, Are you? Oh, yes. Really? Absolutely. Really? I, I don't think you watch the show. I No, I have watched the show. I've seen you completely come out and get really mad at uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez for some yeah, of the things for, in the Green New Deal. Do you mean like free college for black people? What? Did you read the Green no, New Deal? No, I did, but that's, that, that, that's what bothers you? Uh, what bothers me is that when I advocate for environmental policy, having worked for several environmental and I don't think, and also I don't think the policy says free college for black people. No, no, no. It's 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 free college. It's free health care for marginalized and oppressed communities. Oh my God, I, I I'm I'm laughing at Bender's response there. Like, <laughs> I don't think it says free college for black people because it doesn't. It's so stupid. And why would Tim Pool be against that if it said it? If he was actually a liberal. So again, this goes to framing, what Poole focuses on. He claims Donald Trump is an old school liberal because he unfurled a, a LGBTQ flag. Wow, what did he actually do with his power? Anti-transgender and anti-LGBTQ actions under Donald Trump. There are countless of these, countless. Like, <laughs> I will link to this below the video and there's more. So let's just read through the first two. Just, just to give you an idea here, I guess these are the most recent ones. The Department of Housing and Urban Development formally announced the rollback of a previous rule that protected transgender people from discrimination by homeless shelters and other housing services receiving federal funds. Another one. The, Dem the Department of Health and Human Services announced that it finalized the extensive rollback of healthcare discrimination rules to eliminate the protections for transgender people experiencing discrimination in healthcare settings and or by insurance companies. So, like, how can you possibly claim... Donald Trump supports the LGBTQ community when his actual actions while in power were anti-LGBTQ. Unfurling a flag for political purposes means nothing. Now, he goes on, like this is, let's get to the Green New Deal. So, actually, before I even mention this, so Tim Pool says, oh, I said, you know, I'm pro-choice. And by the way, I'm not going to get into, unfortunately, that there's like, an hour and a half, maybe, on that issue alone in this podcast. I will link to it below the video. Like Tim Pool gets enough views. I'm not going to add that many more to them. So if you want to watch it, go watch it. But um, in terms of how Tim Pool, you know, he claims he supports the Green New Deal. He's pro-choice, all this stuff. But what is his focus? As somebody that has a platform that uses his voice online, what are his videos about? He doesn't focus his content on backing the Green New Deal and how great it is, how it's going to help people, how it's going to help society. He doesn't focus his platform on fighting against the overturning of, of Roe v. Wade and how we have to save abortion rights. No, he takes everything from a conservative framing. So even if he somehow personally actually does believe these things, how he uses his platform as a public individual, that's what matters. I don't care how you personally feel about something if you are a celebrity with a massive show that gets 100 million views. If you use your platform for something different, it doesn't matter how you personally identify. Now, on the Green New Deal, so this is the text that he's referring to here. It says, providing resources, training, and high-quality education, including higher education to 
all people of the U.S. Doesn't mention that part. But then it goes on to say, with a focus on frontline and vulnerable communities so that all people of the U.S. may be full and equal participants in the Green New Deal mobilization. Because of this, as the EPA has stated, climate change disproportionately affects marginalized communities. That's why that focus is there. As someone that apparently claims to understand climate policy and, and the need to address it, how do you not know this? Again, because he is playing a conservative. or it, I don't care if he is or isn't a conservative. His content, what he puts out there, what he educates or miseducates people on, that is what matters. Now let's get to the last clip here, which really is just about how well Bender did. So this is Matt Bender discussing white privilege and doing it in a way that I think more people need to discuss it. I, I actually have a problem with the word privilege mm. because I think for people, seems like you're one of them, for a lot of people, they view that word privilege as something that's being looked at them negatively. And it's just not. It's just not. I view white privilege as there are things in my life that like, here's an even better way of putting it. If you are a white person and everything has gone wrong for you in terms of you know, you're homeless and you can't get a job and you can be the most unluckiest person on the face of the planet, it likely did not happen to you because you were white. That's all it is. That's all it is. Whereas if you see a black homeless person who can't get a job, can't, you know, uh, the, you know the, uh, things have happened in their life to get to, they've lost their home. There is a good chance that their race being black uh, had part to do in that, had part to do in their situation. That's all that is. It's not a positive or negative. And if you understand that, if you understand that there are certain things that have not happened to you because you're white, then you understand what black people or, uh, you know, uh, Latino people or Asian Americans go through that you just haven't had to go through. It's not a negative or positive. It's just understanding I, I, how other people go through life. That's all it is. It's not well, a negative thing to understand you have white privilege. It's we're gonna, not. We're going we're gonna to jump to the super chats that weren't deleted. I apologize to everybody. Amazing. You know when Tim Pool changes the subject to super chats <laughs> that Matt Bender's point, point there is irrefutable. He's exactly right. That is how to explain it. And later on, Poole goes on to, again, mischaracterize what white privilege is because he, he isn't there to actually learn or, you know, understand Bender's point. He's there to argue a conservative side. But it goes to showing, like, there are ways that we can communicate these issues a little better. I've discussed this in the past, by the way. I think one of my early videos, like 2017, I'm discussing how the word privilege, unfortunately, does uh, bother some people. And it makes it tougher to educate on people on, on white people and what that means because they're easily offended. Some people like Tim Pool, apparently, easily offended by the word privilege. So there are ways to explain that our experiences are different as white people compared to people who are not white. That's all it is. And that there are disadvantages built into that. But, you know, again, he's not there or Pool isn't there to actually absorb any of this. But ultimately, look, this was a Bender did a fantastic job. Um, a little, he was definitely a little more, I think, confrontational than than Vosh was when Vosh was on the podcast. And you could say that you know there's good and bad reasons for that. Vosh, I think, tried to maybe court his audience, Pool's audience, a little more. Um, but Bender, I think, you know, <laughs> caught Tim Pool a number of times in, uh, in 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 some positions that Pool just could not properly explain, and he tried to either argue his way out of it by arguing in circles or just change the subject. So regardless, I think it's uh, worth checking out if you want to see the full conversation. I will link to it below the video. And I'm sure Matt Bender, I'm sure he'll talk about this as well. I'll link to his podcast and uh, his, both his podcasts below this video as well.